Hi there, welcome to Mike's Guitar Workshop. Um, today we're going to refinish this. Let me get this right. 77 Ibanez, 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 Ibanez Les Paul. It's uh, in fairly good shape. I had already paint stripped the black off here, it was black. And I've been living with this um, for a while. But uh, it's just looking a little bit tatty, especially around the back. I'll bring you in for a close-up now. And the idea is that we're going to respray the complete thing to the antique white version which they came out with. The back is looking pretty sad at the moment. I have already drop filled super glue into all the little parts last night, so this is nice and hard. So that'll get a good flat, <clears throat> and I'm going to try not to use any primer. I want to build up the paint as little as possible. I already meticulously cleaned up all the binding because from the factory there was a lot of there were a lot of inconsistencies. Um, but it looks looking good now. So this will get a this is already sealed with some clear coat actually. So this will make a good base. We will just flat that and mask up the binding and spray the white. And we do the same with the back, sides, the neck. The neck in fact will go white but the headstock will stay black. So that's the way it came. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get cracking. Right, I've done this in a previous video where I need to fill in the screw holes. So basically I just put some super glue in, get some toothpicks, they're just the perfect the right size, um, just bop them in and then you just let that dry for a good few hours before you sand down and respray. Here I'm just uh, blocking down the super glue from last night. I'm using some 220 uh, just to get that flat. I'll come back with some 400 before I put the color on. Thank you. 
Uh, just prepping with some 400. Uh, I don't want to put any primer on, I want to put the color straight on here. Sanding back the super glue and the little toothpicks with some 150 grit. I'll come back with some 400 before I put a bit of primer on here. I'm just reaming out the holes for the new tuners and I've put a piece of tape there which is the depth stop. I've also realized that you only need to ream from one side because the, the front uh, is smaller than the back. Just uh, putting some tape on the binding. I'm going to tape it slightly short of the black, which leaves me room to scrape afterwards. On the neck I'm already back from the paint but I will explain how we painted just now. Just taping up the fretboard now, uh, ready for clear coat after the sanding of the white paint. So here I'm painting the back, 
Now the technique is to give it two light coats and what I mean by that? Well, you pass by at exactly the same angle as you would with a normal coat, but at twice the speed. Um, then you leave it for five minutes to dry. You do that three times in cross directions. And once that's done, then you come with your final two coats of clear and there you go normal speed and then you leave it for 10 minutes between coats. Here I'm just scraping the binding uh, in preparation for the clear coat. Now the idea when sanding the color back is have a light in front of you so that you can see where the orange peel is and the idea is to have a completely flat surface with no little divots and shiny parts. If you can still see shiny little holes, little divots, that means you've still got orange peel. Preparation is key. The flatter this is, the better your clear coat will be. Right, just the, exactly the same way I've painted the white with three light coats and two heavy coats. Uh, I'm sanding back the clear coat now with uh, progressive 1000 and then 1500, after which I will buff. Once again, I have a light in front of me reflecting off the surface and I can see where the little divots uh, are. And I'm looking for a completely flat and featureless surface. It must be completely flat. When I buff, I buff with a soft sponge and finishing paste because the surface is already very smooth. And I let the drill rotate slowly so that the buffing paste gets a chance to actually work its magic. And my buffing pad is always uh, turning away from the, uh, the edge. I'm not turning into the edge. This way I can never catch the guitar. Once the uh, compound is dry, then I'll, then I'll speed up the drill and I just buff it to a high polish. You need to take your time and just chill and just be patient, it will come right. You'll also notice that I've got the buffing pad at an angle to the guitar, it's not flat. 
Uh, the reason for that is because I want to buff away from the binding. I don't want the other side of the buffing pad to catch the binding as I'm polishing. As you can see, we've achieved a near-perfect finish with a spray can. Here I'm progressively flatting the back side of the guitar now, ready for polishing. Again, once with 1000, and then I'll come back with some 1500, and then buff. Just like the front, I'm holding the buffer at an angle, the polishing pad, because I don't want to catch the edge. And I let the paste do its thing at a slow speed, and then as the paste dries, I speed up the drill and just buff to a glass finish.
Thanks guys, thanks for joining. Uh, I think this was a great success. Just goes to show you what you can achieve if you just take your time and uh, have a bit of patience. If you liked the video, please uh, click the like button, uh, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, take care.